Let's go to the Lord in prayer, Brother Larry Parkinson. Will you ask the Lord to bless our service this morning, please? Amen. Amen. Now, if you now turn to page uh, Friday uh, game night for uh, different games. Is that for the teams? That's for everybody. Okay. So, us, uh, that's coming. What time? I don't see a time. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock this Friday night. So try and everybody come and have a good time of fellowship uh, this Friday night. All right. Uh, do we have any other special prayer requests? Do we have any special prayer requests this morning? Any special prayer requests? Uh, maybe somebody has a word of testimony, something that you want to stand up and, and praise the Lord about. Anybody? Well, let's all stand and let's take up our morning offering this morning. As uh, our ushers come this morning, we'll take up our morning offering. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you'd bless this offering this morning as your people give out of a cheerful and loving heart this morning and bless the rest of our service, Father. Lord, just wash our minds in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and Lord, help us to get the blessing that you have for us this morning. Lord, help your people to be fed this morning. Encourage your hearts, Father. And bless them with some, some uh, words from your book, Father. Bless them from some dealing with the Holy Spirit in the hearts and lives, Father. Encouragement and strengthen father and lord if there's anybody here today that's never been saved lord speak to the heart and mind and soul and may today be the day of salvation father do the work that must be done father in jesus precious name i pray and for his sake amen <laughs> Why worry about tomorrow? Why worry if your steps are slow? If your life has been spent for Jesus, you don't have much farther to go for the next hand you shake might be the hand of the savior the next step you take could be on streets of purest gold and your next meal could be and the next touch you feel he could be blessing your soul be strong and keep on going don't be angry when things go wrong, don't give up or it's almost over. All signs are pointing towards home. For the next hand you shake might be the hand of the Savior. The next step you take could be on streets of purest gold. And your next meal could be the marriage supper. And the next touch you feel, he could be blessing your soul. 
Take your Bibles this morning and turn to the Gospel of Luke and turn to Luke chapter 12. And let's begin with verse 22, <clears throat> Luke chapter 12, and let's begin in verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, that's the paragraph mark, and he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than remnant. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow, neither reap, which neither have storehouses, nor barns, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought, can add to his statute one cubit. If ye then be not able to do that which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not a reed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today is in the field, and tomorrow is cast unto the oven, how much more shall he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye double doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knoweth that ye have need of all these things but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you dear heavenly father I pray this morning that you'll bless the preaching of your precious word. Lord, I pray that your people would be fed the book this morning. I pray that it would give them understanding. Lord, I pray that it would do something for their hearts and minds and souls. And Father, I pray that it would come to cause them to love you more and more and to love your book more and more and to serve you more and more. In Jesus' precious name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now my text this morning is verse 27, and it says, Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now you know what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing in the passage? He taken the lily, a small lily, and compared that small lily like a Christian. And said that little small lily is glorious in a particular way. Then he takes the greatest man, Solomon. You know who Solomon was. Solomon was the king in the Old Testament that wrote the book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes and some of Psalms. And Solomon had all the gold a man could want. Man, the streets were practically paved with gold in Solomon's day. The whole temple was made of gold, uh, uh, covered with gold. I mean, Solomon had millions of dollars, the richest man that ever lived. And Jesus said, Solomon in all his glory. Man, he had some glory. I mean, you talk about uh, the gold in Fort Knox couldn't match Solomon's gold. You talk about uh, Howard Hughes getting some money, not like, not like Solomon, brother, not like him. I mean, he was loaded. <laughs> All right? And then Jesus says, one little lily. You know something, if you're here this morning, if you're here this morning and you're saved, you know something? In the body God is going to give you one of these days will be more glorious than Solomon in all his glory. 
I mean, you say, well, preacher, is that me now? No. No, I mean, when you look at you now, you look at the outside and look at you now, there's not much glory here, brother. There ain't much here. Amen? Ain't much there. But what God's going to make you cannot be compared to the glory that King Solomon had. All right, now look at my text again. Now notice in verse 27 it says, Consider the lilies. Consider the lilies. You know what I believe? I believe that Bible's inspired. Don't you? Say amen. amen. Do you believe that book is God's book? Say amen. amen. I think if Jesus Christ said, Consider the lilies. Have you ever considered it? There must be something to them. Must be something to him. If he said, consider the lilies, have you ever considered? Now this morning, I want to consider the lily. Lily number one. You might write it down. But take your Bible and turn over to the book of Psalm Solomon. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalm Solomon. Turn over to the Old Testament, to Psalm Solomon. And pick up this first lily that I want, I want you to consider this morning. Jesus said, Consider the lilies. Lily number one. Psalm Solomon number uh, chapter two and verse one it says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Why, you know who the rose of Sharon is. The rose of Sharon is Jesus Christ. How many of you ever heard the song? Uh, G let me see, let me see. What's that song? Uh He's the lily of the valleys. He's the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand. Everybody ought to know. How many of you ever heard that song? Amen. You know, some that song's wrong. You say, preacher, the song's wrong. It's wrong. You know how come it's wrong? It said, he's the lily of the valley. Is that right? Look at the, look at your book. Look at the word of God. In the text, in Psalm Solomon chapter 2, verse 1, it says, I am the rose of Sharon. Jesus Christ is the rose of Sharon. And the lily of the what? The, the what? The valleys. valleys. Plural, plural, brother. Not only is Jesus Christ the lily of the valley, but he's the lily of the valleys. You say, what makes that so great? I'll tell you what makes it great. Brother, I've been up on some mountaintops where I could shout and praise God and everything was going good, man, and the bills were paid and everything's fine and me and God's right and everything's right. That's a mountaintop. But I've been in some valleys and I've been in more than one of them. You ever been in two or three? I mean two or three? Hey man, if you've been in one and then got out on the mountaintop and then went into the middle one, then you say, hey, he's the lily of the valley. That was over there, but he's not in this one. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He's in this one too. You say, what difference does that make? Hey man, you get down in the valley and you say, he helped me back then, but he's not going to help me now. He's the lily now. He's in the land now. You know something? A Christian ought to grab a hold of that thing. Ought to grab a hold of it and say, He's the lady of the valleys, brother. Now, and grab a hold of it, brother. And get it. Because all this Christian life, sometimes you get up on a mountaintop, and that's great, and that's good. But sometimes you get down on a valley, and that's hard. you got a hard road to go. And it's miserable and lonely. And you think you're the only one there. And uh, you need a lily in a valley. You need him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, notice in Psalm Solomon chapter 2, verse 1, it says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily. It didn't say lilies, plural. It said lily, singular. So no doubt about it, the passage is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, oh, Christian, that I would encourage you to consider the lily of the valleys, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You know what we do? We go through life 
and we get so tied up with things and circumstances that we think Jesus Christ is lightly and we take him lightly. My friend, never take Jesus Christ so lightly. You know who gets you know who gets you through the things you get through as a Christian? And that's the lily of the valley, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You get out in a valley and you get out there and you get going through that valley and it gets dark and it gets cold and it gets lonely and it gets miserable and sometimes you say, Lord, what am I going to do? Look around for a lily. You know what you're doing? You're going through life so fast that you don't slow down and take time and look around and enjoy some of the things in life that God's got for you. Ah. Uh, Hey man, it ain't all just making a living and making money and coming through and having a good time. Sometimes you get in a rock and a hard place and you need to know something about Jesus Christ and get to love him. Get to love him. You know why I'm still in the ministry today? Because of who I'm doing it for. If I did it for me, I'd get out. I'd have quit a long time ago. And if I did it for you... I would get out. I would quit a long time ago. But when I do it for him, I can keep on going. Now, brother, you can do the same thing. When you come down through the valley, you got to come through. And, brother, we all got valleys we got to go through. And maybe my valley is different than your valley. But you've got a valley that you got to go through. You better make sure who you're doing it for. The Bible says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. And that applies to every Christian. Remember, he's the lily of the valley. Again, consider uh, Psalm Solomon chapter 2 and look at the next verse. As the lily among the thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the lily. Did it say lily or lilies? In verse 2. It says lily. Then as the lily. Who's the lily according to the verse you just read? Jesus Christ. As the lily, Jesus Christ, is, is among the thorns. So is, he's going to like Christ or something. So is my love. My, who's the my? The my is the lily. Then the Lord Jesus Christ is talking in the verse. And he so is, so is my love among what? Among the daughters. Then what are the daughters? The daughters are some thorns. The daughters are some thorns. Uh, Look at here. The Lord Jesus Christ is the lily. Who are them thorns? The daughters. Now, who are those daughters? Let's see who the daughters are. Look back at verse 1. And look back at uh, chapter 1 and look at verse 5. Chapter 1, verse 5 says, I am black, uh, but commonly, O ye daughters of what? Jerusalem. What's the daughters of Jerusalem going to be? Jews, Jews, look at uh, chapter 5, look at chapter uh, 2, verse 7, chapter 2, verse 7, I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, look at uh, chapter 3, verse 5, chapter 3, verse 5, I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, look at uh, 3.10, 310, uh, he made the pillars thereof of silver and bottoms of gold and covered it with pure and, uh, yeah, the love for the daughters of Jerusalem. The last four words in verse 10. All throughout the book of Psalm Solomon, the daughters of Jerusalem, the daughters of Jerusalem, the daughters of Jerusalem, it going to be the Jews. So he says in verse 2, He says in verse 2, As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Then the thorns are what? The thorns are the Jews. 
the thorns of the Jews. Who's the lily? Jesus Christ. You ever go down there? You know that rose bush? This beside your house? And you know that thing? I got a bunch of rose bushes out there, and you try to take your hand and stick in that rose bush like that and grab something on the back of that rose bush. You know something? You could have a stand to pull out your hand when you were through with it, unless you had a glove on and a coat on. Suppose there was a lily down in the middle of that rose bush, and you wanted to pick that lily. You wouldn't put your hand in and get it. You say, where is it? Don't look for the love of Jesus Christ in the thorn bushes. Because it's going to be hard to find it there, brother. This is what you're saying, preacher. Where are the Jews today? You want to find the love of Jesus Christ? Don't go to Jerusalem and go to the Jews and find the love of Jesus Christ. That ain't going to be where you find it. Where are you going to find it? You're going to find it amongst the lilies. Hey, where do you want to find a lily? You go in the garden of lilies. What this is? It's a garden of lilies. You don't go in the thorn bush and get them. Now, I can get the love of Jesus Christ there. You know where you get the love of Jesus Christ? In God's people. You know where I look for the love at? I look for the love from you. Brother, and that's where I look for it, because that's where it ought to be found. You know, some, sometimes I, I wonder if the lilies look kind of like the thorn bushes. Don't ever be mistaken for a thorn bush, brother. Don't you live the kind of life that somebody would mistake you for a thorn bush. Because you're not a thorn bush. And don't you live that away. Have a love for Jesus Christ and have a love for his people, brother. Keep a love for one another. Keep a love for one another. You know how come you know you love somebody? Because they put up with you. Now listen to me. Now listen to me good. Somebody that loves you puts up with you. You see, how do you figure that, preacher? How many of you, how many of you men have messed up? Come on, the rest of you, come on, tell the truth. <laughs> okay? You know how come your wife keeps on loving you? Because she loves you. You know what she's doing? She's putting up with you. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Let's go the other route. <laughs> how many of you ladies have messed up? You know how come your husband puts up with you and loves you? He puts up with you. You know why? Because he loves you. You say that's the way it is? I write it in my book and say my name to it. You know how come, how many folks have ever said I've messed up? You know how come you're still here? Because you love me. That's the truth. You put up with me. <laughs> I put up with you, you put up with me. <laughs> you say you believe what I'm saying? Believe with all my heart and mind and soul. Believe it as much as I'm standing right here. You say, what is that? That's love. That's love. It's putting up with. Uh, you know something? You need to love each other. Put up with each other. He said, my text says, my text says, as a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Don't look for it over there. Don't go look for it in the thorn bushes. Don't go to Jerusalem and think you're going to find the love of Jesus Christ. You'll go over there and you'll go a long time looking for the love of Jesus Christ in the city of Jerusalem. You say, I found a Christian here and I found a Christian there. They're not going to get converted to Jesus Christ till he uh, reveals himself to the tribulation and shows himself to them. Until that time comes, the Jews are not going to accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. They're going to reject him as a nation as a whole and they're going right on rejecting Jesus Christ till he shows up and reveals himself in the tribulation. Brother, you look for the love of Jesus Christ in the lily garden. Don't forget where it's at. Don't forget where it's at. Uh, again, Psalm Solomon chapter 6 and look at verse 2. 
Psalm Solomon 6 2. Consider the lilies. Have you ever considered the lilies? You ever consider them? Psalm Solomon 6 2. And it says, My beloved is gone down into his garden to the bed of spices to feed upon the garden and to gather lilies. And to gather lilies. He's gone what? He's gone down to the garden. Consider the lilies that are in the garden. Garden lilies. Do you know there's a difference between a lily that grows in the wild out there and a lily that grows in a garden? The lilies that grows in the garden, they're not the... Do you ever see a garden full of lilies? Just to have a garden there and a whole bunch of gardens. There's 89 different types of lilies in the world today. 89 different types of lilies. And you know where lilies grow? They, they grow in the wild. Mostly they grow in the wild. And for years, gardeners would go out and get lilies in the wild and take them and try to plant them in their garden. And they couldn't plant them. And they wouldn't grow in the garden. They'd grow out in the wild and say, boy, those are beautiful. I think I'll take some of those and put them in my garden. And they couldn't get them to grow. Until finally they learned the secret of the lily, how you have to put that lily, and you can't disturb that lily. You have to let it go, and you, you, can't, you can't come along all the time and mess with it, and mess with it, and mess with it, and mess with it. you got to leave it alone. You know what that shows me? That shows me that sometimes God's people are like lilies in a garden. And sometimes they have to grow, and only God can make them grow. And no matter how much I mess with you, I can't make you grow. And if you're going to grow in a garden of lilies, you must go between you and God. Or you won't grow. And all I am messing with you, trying to get you to grow, and trying to get you to grow, and trying to get you to grow, will just destroy you. And brother, I've tried. But it don't work. There's just something about a lily that when you take and you put it in a garden and you leave it alone, that God will make it grow. Or it'll die. Some Christians are like lilies in a garden. They just die. Just die. And die. You say, preacher, I go to hell. No, I ain't talking about that at all. I'm talking about you never grow spiritually until you get a personal relationship with God Almighty in your heart and you become serious with God and have a sweet fellowship with Him where it's just you and Him and nobody else. You know what they expect? They expect preachers to work miracles. Well, I'm going to come and I'm going to sit in the pew and preacher, you've got to work me a miracle. You just make me grow and I'm going to grow and if I don't grow, it's your fault. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. I can get up here and scream and yell and I can show you that Bible from cover to cover and you can get up and walk out that door and never grow spiritually like you should. Because it's you and him. And not you and me. I'm only the gardener. I just come along, plant it, and I leave it go. Then I look back there and enjoy it. One of these days I'm going to look at your life. And I'm going to say, they've grown and they brought forth some fruit. And aren't they beautiful in the garden? Or I'm going to say, they didn't even come up out of the ground. Or they come up and wilted and never brought forth the blossom. Some Christians are like lilies in a garden. Uh, you know you have to prune the lilies after they come up a certain height in the garden. Garden lilies you have to prune. You have to come along, you have to take a knife, and you have to cut them back just a little bit. You don't cut them back all the way to the ground or you kill them. But you have to prune. The gardener has to cut them back just once in a while. After they come up, the blossom comes, the blossom falls off. Without blossom falls off. And there's no more fruit. You come up and you prune a little bit. You cut off the top of it just where the flower was. And you prune it right there. You know, sometimes the gardener has to come along and prune you sometimes. 
When you say, what's that? Getting cut on. <clears throat> Getting cut on. Take that old knife out. Open it up. Flip it open. Cut on you a little bit. How that hurts. You got it, brother? Do you got it? Sometimes you get out of here and you walk over there and you say, boy, that just hurt. Yeah, but it's pruning. And when you take the pruning, it brings forth fruit. And when you don't take the pruning, there's no fruit. No flower, no blossom. Got to take it. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 6. And let's consider another lily. Matthew chapter 6. And let's consider another lily. Jesus said, consider, consider the lilies. Consider the lilies. Matthew chapter 6 and look at verse 28. Matthew chapter 6 verse 28 says, And why take ye thought for a remnant? Consider the lilies of the fields. Consider the lilies of the fields. Not only consider the rose of Sharon, he said, I'm the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Not only is he the rose of the, the lily of the valley, and not only are there the, uh, the lilies of the, uh, of the garden, but they're also the lilies of what? The field. The field. Now what are the, the lilies of the field? The lilies of the field are, are wild lilies. They just grow up and come up and just grow up and come up. There's a garden to go out there and, and fertilize them every once in a while and go out there and, and give them a good place to go. Or do the lilies just come up on their own and the rain rains them and the sun shines on them and takes care of them? Who goes out and takes care of the lilies in the field? Who is it that takes care of the lilies in the field? To God. Does God take care of the lilies in the field? Then can't he take care of you? How many lilies are there? Thousands and thousands of lilies out in Washington. There's thousands of lilies. And there's thousands of lilies all the way across this country. Thousands of lilies. Who takes care of all those lilies? The Lord takes care of all those lilies. Don't tell me something. If he can take care of all those lilies... Why can't he take care of you? Oh, ye little thing. You know what we do? We get in our sweat. And, oh, Lord. Oh, the Lord going to take care of me. Oh, what's going to happen to me? Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, what happens if that doesn't happen? Oh, what happens if this happens? And, oh, what happens if that happens? And, oh, 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 me. If that happens, oh, oh. You know what you do? You're not trusting the Lord. Amen, and amen, and amen. Hey, my brethren, consider the lilies of the field. Hey, if he made me, can he change me? If he made my brain, can he help it out? If he made my heart, can he change it? Can he do? Is, is anything impossible with God? You know what we do? We go through life. I bet you if I know you like I know myself and the rest of us, you go through life and you say, boy, boy, what happens if this thing happened here? Oh, look where we would be. And you know what you do? You spend the half of your life worrying about something that never happens. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Just something about a woman's makeup or she depends upon somebody. You better depend upon God. You better depend upon God. You better consider the lilies of the field. And consider them. God will take care. God will provide. You know what we die do? We just say, now if I do this, and if I do that, and I do this, and I do that, I'll get the job done. You usually make a mess of it. And the people and the men and women that I saw that decided they were going to do it usually made a first class mess of it doing it. You know what I do? I just say, say, okay, Lord, it's your church and it's your people and what you do with them is your business. Who does this church belong to? Me? No. It ain't my church. 
Now, I admit, I've been guilty of saying this is my church. I've been guilty of that. That's just... To mark it down this morning, it is not mine. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. What belongs to him, what he wants to do with it, he'll do with it. <laughs> belongs to him. And brethren, I'm not mine, and you're not yours. You belong to the Lord, and I belong to the Lord. We're his. He can take care of us. Uh, again, take your Bible and turn to uh, 1 Kings chapter 7 and look at verse 26. 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 7. Over in the Old Testament, 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 7 and look at verse 6. And consider this lily here, or lilies. 1 Kings chapter 7 and verse 26. And it was in the hand's breath thick, and the brim thereof was work like the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. It contained 2,000 baths. You know what that is? That's that place where they put 2,000 baths. That's water. That'd be 13,000 gallons of water in that thing in the temple. What you're reading about in 1 Kings chapter 7 is that later of water, washing later there where it's around inside that temple full of water to wash in. And then it said around about that brim of that thing was a hand's breath, thick like your hand, like that. Thick as your hand, like that. Now I saw a brass, like that. Thick as your hand, by the way. And it said across that thing was what? What is it? Lilies. What kind of lilies are they then? They're water lilies. You follow that? They're water lilies. They're water lilies, brother. Have you ever considered the water lily? Yeah, here's that water lily out there in a big old thing of water. And it's sitting right on the top of that water, a big, beautiful flower comes up on the top of that water lily. Is it just on top of the flower? Something way underneath, there's a little string that goes way down there and goes way down there, and it's rooted in the dirt on the bottom. You know what it has to have to live? Water. Can't live without water. If you drain all the water off that pool, and you drain all the water, and take all the water off there, what happens to the water lily? It dies. You can't live without water. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Ephesians and turn to Ephesians chapter 5 and notice the water of a Christian. It said lilies of First Kings chapter 7 verse 26 and notice how that applies to a born again Christian. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. There's the, here's the water, Lily. The washing of the water by the what? The what? The word. The word. The word. You know something? This book is like water. You say, what do you mean? Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. You're a lily like a, like a water lily. You say, what is it? Preach it just like this. You ever have something one time a man come up to me and he said, Preacher, I read this book and I just read it down through there and read it down through there and lifted it up and read it down through there and read it down through there and lifted this one up and read it down through there and read it down through there and I didn't get nothing out of it. You know what I say to you? Maybe that's you. You know what I say? It's kind of like this. Guy went over here and he got him a, one of these things that you drain spaghetti in. What do you ladies call that thing you drain spaghetti in? A colander. Colander. All right, and you get one of those colanders and you put it under the sink and you turn both faucets on full blast. And then you just wash that colander out until the colander is plumb full of water. Right? Wrong. It won't fill up. It won't fill up. You get in that book, and you get in that book, and get in that book, and read that book, and read that book, until you plumb full. And you say, I didn't get full. Yeah, but boy, is the colander clean. Did you get it? Did you get it? 
Yeah, but when you did it, it had a cleaning effect on you, and it cleaned you when you went through, and you didn't even know it. He said, not full of water. Yeah, but it got clean as it went through. Got clean. That book ain't no ordinary book. I ain't book like a book on the shelf. Go over there and pick a book off the shelf. That's God's book. That's a special kind of book. So when you get through you, it cleans you, cleans you, washes you. You know something about that water lily? That water lily comes up and comes up on top of that water. And if you take and you put a covering over top of that thing and cover up that pond, every lily on the pond will die. They got water. You didn't drain it. You just left the water there. But how come they all die? You take the sun away. When you take the sun away, every one of them will die if you took the sun away. They all die. Got to have that sun. Did you get the illustration? Got to have the sun. The sun was shining on me for me to grow. One time we was up there in the mall. John and Joe and I was walking through the mall. And we walked through there. There was that television sitting over there. And we stopped and looked at it a few minutes. And there was some kid on there, I don't know what the guy's name was, some little kid. And, and he was being uh, interrogated by a policewoman. And this policewoman had him up there interrogating him. And she was saying, uh, she had him up there to get his mug picture, you know, and everything. And she wanted him to take off his sunglasses. And she said, how come you got those sunglasses on at night? And he says, uh, well, somebody as cool as I am, the sun shines on them all the time. <laughs> somebody as cool as a Christian is, the sun shines on you all the time. Amen. Did you get the illustration? Did the sun really shine on that kid all the time? He was probably in darkness. <laughs> the sun shines on me all the time. And I don't even wear sunglasses. <laughs> you say, what is it? You're a lily in the garden and the sun got to shine on you. You say, what happens? You put me in the dark. You ever, you ever feel like Jesus Christ wasn't with you? You ever get out there and you're out of fellowship with him? Out there in the world, living like the world, doing what the world wants to do, going the world's way, talking like the world, and doing the world's thing? Sometimes you just feel like you're lost and going to hell. You know what you need? You need a little bit of a sign, Jesus Christ. You need an old-fashioned prayer meeting, an old-fashioned getting right, getting back in fellowship with him again. You're out of fellowship. Cold and kind of dead kind of going back the way of the world, kind of lost your fellowship with the sun, kind of dried up and lost the flower. Last of all, I want to say, consider the Easter lily. You ever considered the Easter lily? Easter lilies are famous all over this country. There must have been thousands of churches last Sunday that had an Easter lily on them. I don't know if we had any Easter lilies here or not. But most churches have a bunch of Easter lilies on Easter Sunday. You know why they have it on Easter Sunday? Because that's the day that Jesus Christ come up out of the grave. That's the day he arose. A lily takes and it dies and it's underneath the ground. And it's underneath the ground and it's dormant. And it's on the, all went along. It's underneath the ground. It's in a bulb and it's underneath the ground. And when springtime comes, they can have that Easter lily time to the very day that it's going to blossom. They got a they got a counter on that thing. They can counter that thing. And say now that's why the Easter lily is a little different than the rest of them. But I say that Easter lily, they can have that thing down the way. That thing going to come up exactly and going to bloom at the right very day. You know why? Because the Lord came up in three days and three nights. He come out of the grave. I kind of like the Easter lily, the Lord Jesus Christ. He died, was buried, and went to that grave for three days and three nights. Free! You know, Jesus Christ has died for your sins, was crucified for you, and did it to save your soul from hell. Have you ever appreciated the Easter lily? That's him. 
Have you ever accepted his payment on the cross of Calvary for your sins? Or are you trusting in baptism? Oh, what a poor thing to trust in. Are you trusting in communion? Oh, what a poor thing to trust in. Are you trusting in church membership? Oh, what a terrible thing to trust in. I'm trusting in the Easter life, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All eyes closed and all heads bowed and Christians praying this morning. He said, consider the lilies. Consider the lilies. Now you Christians here this morning, you may not be like the garden lily that it has to come along and only God can make grow. Or maybe you're like the lily of the field and you're out there in the field and no way can, can anybody take care of you but God Almighty himself. Now my friend, you need to stop worrying and you need to stop fretting and you need to trust a God as a lily of the field. And you need to consider he's a lily of the valley. Maybe you're going through a valley. Maybe you're down through there. And the valley's lonely and the valley's cold. and The valley's miserable. And you're going down through the valley. Stop and consider the lily of the valley, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Maybe you like that water lily out there and the sun's not shining on you like he ought to. And you're back and cold and out of fellowship with him and you're in friends with the world and the love of Jesus Christ is, is not in you like it ought to be. You ought to fall back in love with the Lord Jesus Christ and get back in love with him again, Christian. Get back in love with him again. Maybe you're here this morning and you just got to grow cold to the Bible and haven't read the Bible for weeks and weeks and weeks and you haven't been in an old-fashioned prayer meeting with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you something. You're backslidden. You're backslidden. And you need to get your heart right with God this morning. You need to come and come, fall in love with Jesus Christ again. You've left your first love and get that love back for him like you used to have. How about it? Is that you here this morning? Maybe there's a Christian here this morning to preach you. I know I'm saved and I know Jesus Christ is my Savior. But I'm just kind of cold and backslidden out of fellowship with him and would you pray for me? Would you raise your hand this morning? Amen. 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 Pray that you would. Maybe there's somebody here this morning to preach you I'm not saved. And I know I'm not saved. And I, I know that I should be. Pray for me. Would you raise your hand this morning? Is there one like that this morning to preach you I've never been saved? And I know I'm not saved. Pray for me. Is there any this morning? Is there any? Maybe you're a Christian here this morning and maybe you're going through a valley and it seems kind of lonely, it seems kind of hard. And you say, preacher, I need prayer this morning that I will look for the lily of Jesus Christ in the valley that I'm going through. I need prayer, pray for me. Is there one like that? Amen. Amen. Is there another? Amen. Amen. Is there another? Amen. Amen. Now, Christian, keep your eye on him. Keep your eye on him. He's there in the valleys. Now keep your eye on him. Don't look to me. Don't look to somebody else. Look to him. Consider him. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that your people will go away this morning remembering that all valleys you'll go with them. You're in every valley, Father. And Lord, you're the lily. You're the sun that shines on us all, Father. And Maybe there's a Christian here that's out of fellowship and needs to get back in sweet fellowship with you again, Lord. Speak to the heart and mind and soul. And Lord, help them to get back in reading the book and back in their prayer life and back in loving your word like they used to, Father. In Jesus' precious name I pray and for his sake, amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Take your hymn and turn the page. For one. Every sin I sinned, but there's mercy with the Lord, and He will surely give you rest. I trust Him in His word, only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now.
all eyes closed and all head bowed and Christians praying this morning. Now maybe you're here this morning you didn't raise your hand for salvation. And if you're not saved, I want to tell you, you'll go to hell and you'll burn forever in hell. Without Jesus Christ, there's no hope for you. He died for your sins. He was buried. And he arose again to save your soul. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, will you step out of your seat and come? If you will, if you will accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, he said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you've never been saved, would you step out as we sing this dance and would you come? Let's pray. You Christians here this morning, maybe God spoke to your heart. And maybe you need to come as we say this next manza. Maybe you need to come. And maybe if you come, the unsaved would come this morning, accepting Christ as your Savior. If God spoke to your heart this morning and you need to get it right with the Lord, you step out and come as we sing this text, then to you come. Yes, Let's sing one more stand. If God spoke to your heart, you come. Only trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. Brother Dennis Eptograph, will you uh, close our service in a word of prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We pray now that there be somebody here that doesn't know you as personal Lord and Savior. But before the day is over, that they will come to know you. Just pray now you help us all. Live for you and serve you better. Go before us today, guys, and protect you. Bring us back safely to you. We ask you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.